Alright, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Fireworks Magic Arena Starter Deck. We'll be upgrading the deck in two stages. First, I'll show you how to upgrade the deck with only commons and uncommons. And then I'll show you some of the rares and mythics you can use if you have a few extra wild cards. Though, as always, I do caution you to spend those wisely as they are difficult to obtain. So, Fireworks. It's a very straightforward is it spells deck. It has burn spells. It has card filtering. All the hallmarks of a blue red deck that aims to cast a bunch of spells. And then it has payoffs in the form of Agar, Archmage Emeritus, Umara Mystic. So the first two can help draw more cards. The Archmage will draw them every time we cast something. Agar will let us draw extra cards when we overkill stuff. Like something has three power, we deal four damage to it. It will draw an extra card and the mystics will get pumped up every time we sling spells so pretty standard right burn stuff draw cards and then reap the benefits of doing so the deck also has a bit of a wizard sub theme um agar and the mystic are both wizards and they both trigger on wizards and there's also like basalt ravager which deals damage based on the number of wizards we control and every creature in the deck is technically a wizard but this feels more like a, an incidental sub theme it's there but it's not a huge factor there's three cards that care about um, wizards and two of them are more intended to be triggered with spells uh, agar and umara mystic the wizard thing is uh, kind of whatever um so it's there we're not gonna be focusing too much on it not a big deal not focusing on that really so there's a lot of good news with this deck though first off the deck is very easy to upgrade with commons and uncommons in fact the majority of our upgrades are going to be common and uncommon so that's great if you want to build this on a budget there's also a ton of variations of this deck in standard at the moment um this is a competitive deck blue red spell decks are very competitive right now and there's actually a lot of um versions of it there are more aggressive lists with like delver of secrets and then there's more controlling lists with all runs epiphany um even the world championship winning deck was an is it spells deck it's, it was called is it dragons but it played um two different dragons and a bunch of spells so uh, if you didn't see my world championship deck uh that's the thing so the ceiling is high with this one there is a, a lot of room for improvement a lot of opportunity to kind of build this to your liking but my plan is mostly to upgrade this without breaking the wild card bank and i'll leave some resources below to some different uh is it meta decks so you can check those out but for our upgrades first let's start with taking out two arcane investigators for two flame channelers so the investigators are supposed to give us card draw but they kind of suck at it they cost six uh six mana to draw a card we have to do that every time it's too much whereas flame channel it's a two drop just the same but when we cast a burn spell it will flip into embodiment of flame which is a 3-3 three, three. so it's a two mana 3-3 three, three, so that's good and it collects flame counters that can be removed to play cards off the top of our deck so it's like much easier much easier card draw and it's a better creature and it's just uh, it's just better it's just better There's, we don't need to talk about it it's just better no question i also want to take out two prismari pledge mages for two more flame channelers uh because it's uh, it's just better uh the pledge mage it's a two mana three three blocker but we get a three three for two with the channeler as well it's almost always gonna flip it flips so easily we have so many burn spells flipping is not gonna be a problem so we have a two mana three three um it can just attack and we don't have to cast stuff to attack with it and it draws us cards it's just better so another easy upgrade next i want to take out the third pledge mage for a fourth agar so usually as a general rule you don't play four copies of legendary creatures but in this case it draws cards it's going to draw so many cards that i don't care too much if i draw too many of them like if i draw three of them that sucks but it'll draw cards so that's fine next we're going to take out kazo royal chaser for an expressive iteration so kazo just doesn't do much in this deck reducing the cost of spells isn't really what i care about like she's great in a deck that cares about big spells it's just not necessary here and expressive iteration is one of the best card filterers in standard get you two cards for the price of one um a quick note on this card some people might not uh know how to optimally play this play it before your land drop if you play it before your land drop 
you can exile the land and then play it from exile. You can uh, put a card in your hand, put a land into exile, put a third card on bottom of your library, and then play the land from exile and still have the card in hand. Next, we're going to take out Faraday's Fireball for Rending Flame. So both of these deal five damage. The Rending Flame just does it cheaper and more efficiently. It does it for three mana instead of five. We do technically lose that two damage from the Fireball, right? The, uh, the, the, the die rolling two damage thing. But most of the time, that's going to hit us. It very rarely only hits the opponent. It usually hits us too. And that's actually bad in this deck because this is an is it spell stack and typically that means we're a little bit weak to aggro decks because we're so light on creatures we don't have a ton of creatures in the deck so our life total isn't something that i just want to spend carelessly like i want to protect my life total so removing that two damage to both players thing is actually in my opinion an improvement so it's actually better that we don't deal two damage to ourselves and it's two mana cheaper so just better we're also going to take out an air cult elemental for an emerith desert doom and no we are still in the budget build i am such an idiot i, I just realized this i'm i'm right now recording the last two decks and i only just realized that i can use the rares from the other decks so emrith is a great top end finisher for a spell slinging deck because it draws you cards which is generally what you need to do in spell slinging decks so it's just better than the air cult elemental air cult elemental not really playable not very good and you know emrith isn't exactly perfect for this deck but it's a free rare it's way more powerful it's really good it's just better so yeah you could do that and for the same reason We'll take out the other air cult elemental for a gold span dragon. Once again, this was in one of the other decks. It was in the treasure hunt deck. So you 100% have this guaranteed. It's a budget upgrade because it's a free upgrade because you have it already. Once again, it's another top end finisher in a lot of these is it spell decks. So definitely better than the elemental. Lastly, for the budget deck, I want to take out two mountains for two spike field hazards. This is just a land that doubles as a burn spell. We like burn spells. We have the flame channelers. Uh, so perfectly happy to just have a couple of these and take out a couple of lands, especially since we're going to be drawing so many cards. We'll probably be flooded most of the time because we can draw so many cards, so that's fine. And this is our budget list. For the most part, I'm actually kind of happy with this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty decent considering the fact that we didn't use any rares. We were actually able to cut out most of the bad filler cards, right? There's lots of bad cards in these uh, starter decks, and uh, we got rid of a lot of it on a budget, so that's good. It's a much more stable deck without needing rares but we do have a few rares we can add and we actually have a few options for what we use so first off what i want to take out are maelstrom use and creative outburst i think these are the weakest cards in the deck there are two muses one outburst and what we replace these with is kind of up to you. My number one recommendation is Smoldering Egg. So this is a two mana zero four. It'll collect counters as we cast spells. And once it hits seven counters, it flips into a dragon. So that's pretty good. It's a pretty good payoff for casting spells. But we can also replace similar things like Magmatic Channeler. It's a one three that once we get enough spells in the graveyard, it becomes a four four. Plus it can filter through our deck as well. When we use its ability it will put a spell in the graveyard we draw another card and we get some extra cards so um works as card advantage works to filter through our deck also can be a two mana four four it's also a wizard so if you care about that with agar and umar mystic um it is a wizard oh uh, you could also put like all runs epiphany here another great spell slinging finisher uh you could even put like uh galazeth prismari or gold span dragon both of these would be fine as well as the mana form hellkite uh, Maniform Hellkite, also fantastic here. There's tons of options, and basically all of them are fine. You can take out these three cards. You could put in one Galazeth, one Maniform Hellkite, and a, 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 a Magmatic Channeler, and that'd be fine, really. So basically, just top-end finishers that care about spells. I'm personally recommending Smoldering Egg because it is a great blocker against aggro decks. I said earlier that this deck will be weak against aggro decks. We are so creature light that the mono white and green aggro decks are gonna run us over. That's gonna be a major problem and uh, we don't have board sweepers. You could put in like the Cinderclasm card if you want but um we're gonna be weak to get aggro decks and I like the Smoldering Egg because it's a 0-4 so it blocks basically everything in mono white and it uh blocks a lot of mono greens creatures 
numbers, uh, all the two twos and three threes. So I like that it stalls for a couple turns until we can get our, you know, our, our burn spells and card advantage engines going. So I personally like Smoldering Egg just because it's a blocker on turn two. That's that's what I like most about it. It's a blocker on turn two. Eventually becomes a dragon that can uh, kill a bunch of stuff. But uh, honestly, any of the other stuff, if you have them already, that's totally fine. Anything's really fine. Anything's better than these three cards, right? So uh, ex feel free to experiment, but I recommend Smoldering Egg. I also want to take out the Rock Slide Sorcerers for Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. So this is just a slight optimization. The difference between these two cards is Rock Slide Sorcerer is really good when your deck is firing off and working already, right? As you're slinging spells, you just get an extra damage. That's great and all, but it doesn't work so well if you're playing from behind or if you're on the verge of losing. Basically, it's okay when your deck is working and it's really bad when your deck isn't working, whereas Leer is basically just always good. Leer, if you're ahead, it just gets you more ahead by giving you more gas, more cards. And if you're behind, Leer can help you catch back up by giving you access to your entire graveyard. So Rock Slide Sorcerer, it's good like 55% of the time, whereas Leer is good like 97% of the time basically so they're both fine but Lear is just way better um way better in more scenarios basically but Lear on the other hand will let us recast everything from our graveyard everything in our graveyard gets flashback based on its mana cost so basically we get to cast all of our stuff from our graveyard I will say though just a quick note it doesn't work well with magmatic channeler so if you end up adding that these two don't play well together because if we recast stuff from our graveyard it can shrink the channel Channeler, uh, if we lose too many spells in the graveyard. So, a uh, fair warning there, Magmatic Channeler, Leer probably shouldn't go in the same deck. But other than that, it's amazing. It can't be countered, and it gives us so much gas in the late game, which is pretty good. And then we can just move on to the mana base. We can take out the Snow Duels for the Storm Carved Coast. The Snow Duels always enter tapped. The Storm Carved Coast have a chance of entering untapped usually enter untapped, so much better. We can also take out three basics for three pathways, because why draw a mountain or an island when we can draw either, depending on which one we need. It's also probably worth it to take out a mountain and an island for the creature lands from Forgotten Realms. Both of these are nice in this deck because we're so light on creatures, and we usually have a lot of lands because of how many cards we draw, that um having some creatures built into our mana base uh, is nice in this type of deck. So that's the deck guys. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of is it spell slinging decks and standard at the moment. So I would definitely encourage you to look around. Uh, maybe check the description. I'll add a couple there if I, uh, if I remember. If <laughs> which I sometimes don't but uh, either way this deck is definitely way more powerful than what we started with and it didn't take too many rare wild cards to get here it took five at most which is pretty nice so there you go hopefully that was helpful thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one